hello welcome back to sailor space okay so this week we are going to take up a fresh topic last week we talked on four stroke engine and it was a very good content there i really appreciate the likes the subscription the comments and the sharing it really helps motivate and encourage me okay so today we are going to take on a fresh and very new topic so you always watch out for this space weekly for a new topic for the week this week we are going to be talking on two stroke engines so two stroke engine has really been a controversial um topic for a while due to its working principle oftentimes people do confuse how the four um strokes normally known in the four stroke engine is being combined just in two stroke that's why we have lectures like this um videos like this explanations like this that will help clear every of such doubt watch till the end because there are definitely a whole lot of good content you are going to get from this so quickly let's go into the first um part of our discussion today which is going to be the basic component of two stroke engines so we have the piston the piston is a very important component in a two-stroke engine. It is connected to the piston rod in large slow speed type two-stroke engine. And in medium speed strong type engine, the piston is connected to the crankshaft. Okay, now let me throw more light on this. When we talk about two-stroke engine, two-stroke engine are divided into... Engines are divided normally into different types. We have... um engines divided into type based on their mood of combustion that's the compression ignition and the spark ignition engine we also have engine um described based on their speed we have large low speed engine we have medium speed engine we also have engines um described or, or classified based on their um designs we have the crosshead type in uh, two stroke engine we have the trunk type two, um, two stroke engine this engine we will not say one is superior to the other but we will actually say that due to its application different um power generation different amount of work needed we will choose one over the other so moving forward we are going to be talking about um, two-stroke engine based on two categories. I will be explaining on the large slow speed crosshead type. Now, if you hear from the name large speed, large slow speed crosshead type two-stroke engine, I use for large application like running a ship like thousands of dead weight of ship container ship cargo ships um lng ships that are used for running very large applications so now when you talk about the crosshead the set large to slow speed crosshead type so a crosshead is like a connection that connects the piston rod to the um connecting rod now um, I will show you a video of a piston rod connected to a piston. You get to find out from that video that the piston is does not have a very large ball. Like, it's not very big. It's just moderate size. But the, the piston rod is actually um, very long. Now, in a situation where you have um, that type of size of piston with that such a ball, like when I mean ball, the diameter, and a very long piston rod, have you ever considered a situation where that piston rod will be connected straight from the top of that engine to the crankshaft? And in this large um, slow speed engine, mind you, they are always very large. Like when I mean large, they are massively large. Um, so you see, like they are feet high. You and that you get to find out that if the piston rod is being connected just 
only the piston rod down to the crankshaft there will be a tendency for there to be a wobble and the the energy will not be the power from generated from combustion will not be um transmitted in a linear form down to the crankshaft so that brought the idea of giving attaching a cross head um a cross head design that has bearing that um that it connects the piston rod to the um um, connecting rod because if the connecting rod is connected from the crankshaft down to the piston the underside of the piston you tend to see that there will be wobbling motion that was how the idea of the piston rod connected and so the, the, the crosshead is more like an intermediate between the um, piston rod and the um, crankshaft so that's how um, the connection came about. So basically, in the component of a large slow speed crosshead type um, two stroke engine, we have the piston to the piston rod to the crosshead to the crankshaft, then to sorry to the connecting rod then to the crankshaft i will definitely explain that in detail as we go on so for the second type which is the medium speed trunk type engine that's more like a simpler design which is used for um smaller applications like motorbike smaller engines and you get to find out that in this um medium speed trunk type engine it does not have a piston rod because the engines are not so giant so we have the piston connected directly to the connecting rod and then to the crankshaft so that's the major two difference between a large low speed crosshead type engine and a medium speed trunk type engine so as we go forward um, in the basic component you will get to see the different type of um component that has a two-stroke engine but before we continue um always remember that the connecting rod is what links um the piston to the crankshaft be it a large low speed engine or a trunk type engine it is what links the piston to the crankshaft so we will quickly move over to the crankshaft now the crankshaft is a very important component in an engine especially the two-stroke engine also so the crankshaft does the job of convecting reciprocating motion of the piston in the engine cylinder to the rotary motion okay the crankshaft consists of the crank webs the crank pin and the crank journal and the journal sorry finely arranged on this um, arrangement we have the connecting rod being attached to it so the crankshaft is not just a straight um it's not just a straight um piece as you will see in the picture it has um some divisions to enable the the um the attachment of the connecting rod to it the next company we are going to be talking about is the spark plug now back to our engine classification for the for the um, applications of two-stroke engines that are for small design like our small generators our motorbikes you you get to see that most of them don't use fuel injectors some cars although they use fuel injectors so most of the cars use spark plugs so now you see that a spark plug is a very important component in a two-stroke engine when we are talking about small application like this small engines like the motorbike they use spark plug the spark plug is what gives that spark the flames it is um as compared to the um, large um, engines that will generate enough heat that will reach its auto ignition temperature that whenever the fuel is being spread in it will automatically ignite these other um, smaller engines and motorbike etc do not have do not generate um, that heat because they although they generate the heat their design is quite different because in those engines the fuel and the air enters together like it is fuel air mixture not like the other way around where the air enters first then the fuel is is entering next to ignite in this particular smaller engines fuel and air combines together to to um to enter the engine so because of this design where fuel and air enter into the engine 
you will not have additional fuel to supply the, the to be supplied that will boost up the the combustion process so this particular type of design has what we call the spark plug so the spark plug is what creates the emission it creates sparks of we can call it flames that when the compressed air has been risen to its high temperature and pressure or, um, of say 540 degrees c or within 34 35 bar when the spark plug um gives a spark ignition process takes place so the next one we are going to be talking about is the fuel injector so the fuel injector is common to the large slow speed crosshead type engine whereas the spark plug is common to smaller applications where petrols are being used so you can simply put that the fuel injector is common to application where diesel and heavy fuel oil is being used for large engines so quickly the fuel injector is more like an avenue um, a, a, a series of uh, a design of nozzle that allow fuel to be atomized in the correct proportion into the engine cylinder for um, combustion or the power process to take place so quickly we'll go to the next component which is the um pot if you remember when i was talking about four stroke engine i mentioned that four stroke engine has valves attached to them but now the two stroke engine has Pot. This makes the design of the two-stroke engine simpler and less complex as compared to the four-stroke engine since they do not have lots of moving parts as compared to the working mechanisms of the four-stroke engine. So the first one we are going to be talking about is the inlet or intake port the intake port is what allows fresh air to enter into the engine cylinder for combustion that in blast engines it is just fresh air that enters then for smaller applications of two-stroke engine we have what we call a combination air fuel mixture that's a combination of air and fuel entering through that port at the same time so now if you check the picture we have um a, a two spaces so two openings rather the first opening has um a blue arrow on it so that one that has a blue arrow on it is what we call is what we call the exhaust port so the exhaust port helps to remove the unburned gases or you can call it combustion gases or exhaust gases out of the engine cylinder to allow for effective combustion so now these ports are very important in um, two-stroke engine reason being that in four-stroke engine each stroke has its function so we will always have a full stroke for exhaust to leave the engine and also have a full stroke for air to enter in the engine but this time around the two stroke is not like that the strokes are being limited so we have what we call scavenging process that helps to clean the uh, the engine cylinder of the exhaust gases and prepare it for combustion now how do the scavenging occur during the operation of this two stroke engine that will be explained later there will be a period where the intake port and the exhaust port will open simultaneously that's the open at the same time and this period is called the period of overlap during this overlap period the two ports stays open for a calculated um, period of time this allows fresh air in large stroke engine apparently it allows fresh air to enter through the intake ports and at the same time go out through the exhaust ports what this helps do is push out all the exhaust gases in the cylinder and makes it clean for the next combustion process so those are some of the components of um, a two-stroke engine it's not the like it's not the total component that embodies the two-stroke engine these are just the basic component that will allow the combustion process to take place so quickly we are going to be taking the um the working principle of a two-stroke engine as compared to the four-stroke engine i will not say four stroke happens but i will say four processes happens in two strokes unlike the four stroke four processes happen in four stroke but in two stroke four processes happens in two stroke how does this come about in two stroke we have basically two strokes which is the compression stroke and the past stroke that makes one working cycle that's one revolution of the engine crankshaft somebody will ask 
how do the air enter into the engine cylinder another may ask how do the exhaust gas go out of the engine cylinder especially when there are no strokes for this so that's what we are going to be talking right away as we all know the two-stroke engine is a closed cycle so let's assume that our engine just finished a power cycle and our engine is is um, our piston is at top dead center in a previous video i explained the meaning of top dead center and bottom dead center you can check on the video on the what the working principle and basic concepts of the four stroke engine you can see it there so let's assume the piston is at top dead center and is approaching the bottom dead center after finishing the power stroke so now how does this process actually happen as the piston is moving downwards it gives off the energy it has gotten from the ignition of fuel as it moves downward it slowly uncovers the exhaust port as a piston uncovers the exhaust port exhaust use gases that energy has gone out is in the combustion chamber those um, burnt gases escapes through the exhaust port as the engine keeps moving down this process continues while the piston as the piston keeps moving down sorry this process continues while the piston keeps moving down until it uncovers the um, intake port mind you there is a period of overlap I explained earlier a little time frame in which both the exhaust port and the inlet port open together to allow for efficient scavenging to take place so we can now see as the uh, in the downward um, motion of the piston we have what we we have the exhaust um, process in it we have the intake process in it and we also have the power stroke in it to be explained properly later so the piston keeps moving down until it reaches um bottom dead center so immediately the crown pass just passes the bottom dead center the piston starts going up again the air that has been trapped in the cylinder starts compressing in this moment the the, the piston has covered the exhaust port and the inlet port that was earlier open for exhaust gas to go out and air to come out you can now see that the piston is now moving up the remaining air inside the cylinder is being compressed as this air is being compressed temperature and pressure is being increased in the cylinder to approximate 540 degrees c or 34 or 35 bar thereabouts of pressure the piston keeps going upwards until it reaches the top, um, top dead center at top dead center for large slow speed engine fuel injector sprays fuel into the engine cylinder and ignition takes place for the smaller trunk type engine that uses spark plug the spark gives the, the spark plug gives a flame or sparks that cause the ignition process to take place so now in this up uh, as the ignition takes um, uh, process happens and power um the power stroke happens the energy from the combustion forces the piston down and the whole process occur again so if you want to look at this um explanation very well you find that we have just two stroke the first stroke is the uh, the the first stroke is the upward stroke and the downward stroke merely the upward stroke happens as the piston is going down we have the exhaust going out we have the exhaust process we have after then we have the intake process where air enters inside then we also have the um the okay then we now have the piston now at top that at bottom the center sorry then when it's at bottom the center when the crown just passes bottom the center the piston starts going back up again and in this second going up we now have what we call the compression stroke where the air is being compressed the um to a very high temperature and pressure approaches tdc fuel injects fuel injector injects fuel either diesel or heavy fuel or combustion takes place or spark it Splug gives the spark of flame combustion takes place and you can see that the whole process keep happening so you get to find out that 
for two stroke engine two strokes makes one working cycle and one working cycle is one revolution of the engine crankshaft so we've come to the end of today's lesson on two stroke engines hope you enjoyed your video thank you for watching till the end you can also find a previous video concerning four stroke engine um, the link will be provided in the description space or you can simply search for it remember to like subscribe share and drop your comment see you next week always keep tap on the space thank you